Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and the coach, Mark Rick, joins us momentarily. Well, partner, we've done a lot of games. We've done a lot of Miami-Florida State games. We've never watched Miami fall behind by 20 points against Florida State and come back to win, but that's what happened. They meant to do that, right? They wanted to keep everybody Had there. Them right where they wanted them. <laughs> yeah, right where they want them. What a game. And, I, you know, I think the thing that sticks out to me is – how committed the entire football team was to winning the football game. They did not surrender. They rallied together. They went in at halftime. Your leader, Jaquan Johnson, spoke to his defense and, and got them motivated and to help understand. And you, you had a freshman quarterback and Nikosi Perry who played at times like he was a senior and played at times like he was a freshman, but really just a team, a team victory. And it's nice to know that these young men were going to be able to talk about this for 50 years. I mean, they, they'll never stop talking about this game. And, and the crowd was fantastic. And Miami stopped the, the hex of, of Florida State at, at Hard Rock Stadium. They, they hadn't uh, beat Florida State at home since 2004. That's finished. They beat them at Dote Campbell last year. That's finished. And now Miami's got a two-game streak. I've never run in a marathon. I have climbed a few mountains. You've ridden your bike in some grueling situations. I think this is one of those examples of you find out just how far you can be pushed and how much you have. And the defense, for example, found out how much more they have in their tank, where they can take their game to, because they went to a different level in the second half. See, the thing is now, Joe, it's dangerous for, for the rest of the season for the opponents, because now this defense, when you look at the last five, six weeks, what they've tasted and the confidence that they've accumulated over these wins, and the fact that they were able to, to come back after, after having a great game against North Carolina where, where everything went right to going into Florida State and having to struggle through some situations. And now that confidence is there, and I think that they are just going to continue to climb. The best is yet to come for this defense. Miami, I don't believe, and it may sound crazy, I don't believe that they, that they capped out against Florida State. How about the quarterback, Nicozy Perry? He really grew up, and now you're talking about room to grow. Well, he must, he, he's got a lot more room to grow, but man, when he needed to make some plays, he made them. Well, the thing for him is that it won't get any tougher than this athletically when you're looking at a defense. And Florida State, their talent level is extremely high. It's as high as anybody in the country. And he matched up. He, he was able to adjust to their speed, adjust to their tempo. He made throws. And the thing that impressed me the most is that he took hits. He did get hit. He left the pocket designed to leave the pocket sometimes, took off for some runs, and then he got squashed in the pocket a couple times. But he never was flustered. He never got rattled. You never saw a camera go in his face and he looked lost. And he maintained his composure and he continued to lead. And he got worn down. You know, the game will wear you down, but his best football, biggest plays were in the second half. So he's going to utilize this as well as anybody will as far as confidence goes and a learning experience. All right, this week it's Miami and Virginia, but one more look back at the Hurricanes in Florida State. Our highlights are brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Welcome along, everybody. The Mark Rick Show brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. Along with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick as the Hurricanes with a dramatic 28-27 victory over Florida State. Congratulations, coach. Great win. <laughs> it was a great win. It was uh, 
You know, I was talking to Blake James, our athletic director, and you know, we're talking about the game. He's like, I don't care if we just win by one, I'll be happy. <laughs> and this is before the game, and he was prophetic. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of the team. I'm really proud of the coaches. I'm very proud and thankful for our fans and students and glad nobody left at halftime, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was a great day for us. We, we really, we really uh, did something spectacular. Coach, we cannot underestimate the importance <clears throat> of our hometown crowd. Yeah, those, our crowd is phenomenal. I mean, it really does make a difference when you, when the buses roll in and the whole place is covered with tailgates and tailgates of all kinds. I mean, I can't imagine the diversity in those tailgates, but, uh, and the fun they're having. But then, uh, then the cane walk, you know, when our players go through there and of course our recruits are there to witness the reaction of our fans to our players and that interaction. And then just walking in the stadium and seeing all the students and the, Band of the hour, you know, lighting it up, and you know, it's it's a certain way in pregame warm up, and then all of a sudden when the game kicks off, it's 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 just uh, jam packed. It's beautiful. It was an avalanche in the second half. Uh, you mentioned the crowd; uh, they stayed right with it. They never lost faith, and uh, that when that avalanche starts happening, the turnovers get in there. I think there's a whole bit of psychological warfare that happens between the yeah. the sound coming down on the opponent. The chain coming out, the momentum swing, I don't know. I think you can really, really feel it. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, it was it was being felt for sure. And uh, um, we felt it, and I'm sure Florida State felt it too. It's That's what home field advantage is all about. We have a true home field advantage. We have the kind of crowd that you want to bring recruits to and let them see how well we get supported by our people. And... Um, don't think it doesn't make a huge difference in their minds. It makes a big difference. Coach, at halftime, the talk was six points, I guess it was, 13 points, 20 points, correct? Or are the numbers, the numbers? Yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're winning or losing a game, I, I know when we're winning a game by six, 13, or 20, even 20, it's like, you just don't, you hate that number, you know, because it feels like a three touchdown lead, but it's not. It feels like a two touchdown lead, but it's not. So it's a one touchdown lead, and then it's a one score, and you could be you could lose the game. So uh, certainly, uh, that's a number that you also when you're ahead, you kind of know it's it can it can bite you in a hurry. But when you're behind, you know it can help you. And uh, we knew just one score would put us in position to be within a touchdown of winning the game. At halftime, obviously, we game another one, or they earned another one, and now we're down twenty. Uh, with about you know six minutes to go in the in the third quarter, whatever it was, um, but then then the then the turnover happened, and then the momentum changed. And I mean, there was a lot of great plays that were made offensively too, and a lot of clutch fourth down. I mean, two touchdown catches by Cager, and two touchdown throws by Nicosi, and um, you know just a lot of things had to go right, and they did. But uh, you know, Jaquan Johnson apparently. Had a, an unbelievable speech at halftime for the defense in particular, and uh, he rallied him. And you know, he's got the right to to do that as a All American, as a team leader, as a senior. And uh, you know, when you come in at halftime, offensive coaches go in a certain room, defensive coaches go in another room, start strategizing about what we're going to adjustments we might make and all that. Players are just you know doing what they got to do, maybe changing some clothes underneath or or maybe you go in the restroom or whatever it is, you know, they do their thing, we do our thing, but, so I'm in the other room, but I hear this, I hear this silence and then I hear this speech going on and I realize it's Jaquan, but I didn't hear every, every word he said, but they, they said he put it on pretty good. Coach, when you watch Travis Homer, and I mean, you've coached some of the greatest backs in the business, yeah. pound for pound. No question. Right, as good as they get. I mean, there's no question he's the, he is the best back pound for pound, and I'm talking about the toughest back. I'm talking about the most physical runner at 195 pounds or whatever he weighs. Um, I remember when I first met him, I, you know, I'm, I'm leaving Georgia with Nick Chubb, Todd Gurley. I mean, these guys are beasts. These guys are 220 pounds, 230 pound backs that can run. And, and, and I, I, go to, I go to his high school, and he had just come off of a shoulder surgery. So I'll bet you he weighed 175 pounds, and I'm going. <laughs> There's no way. You know, I'm thinking, 
you know, should we should we honor this scholarship that because he was already offered and, and had committed to Miami from the former staff. I mean, they knew what they were doing, you know what I mean? So but I'm looking at it and I'm going, oh my goodness, well, you know, maybe he'll be okay. And um but you know, he again he had had surgery, he hadn't lifted in a while, he just he just didn't look strong, you know. And then, you know, when he finally did show up, he, I was like, okay, this guy looks pretty good. But just to watch him run and finish runs the way he does um, is amazing. He's uh, a great pass protector. Um, and when he runs the ball, there's a certain track you got to take on an inside zone, outside zone. And by staying on a certain track, you set up blocks for your linemen. A lot of backs want to cut back too soon, and the linemen can't get their fit up on a linebacker on a second level, second level player. But he will stay on that track and allow everybody to do their job. And then, then he'll either blast through a little bit of crease or he'll cut back at the last moment. But he's a really talented kid. Glad, glad he's on our team. All right, Miami will take on Virginia this week, 7 o'clock from Charlottesville. Uh, we'll, we will reflect a little bit more on Florida State and look ahead to Virginia as we continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. This week it's Miami and Virginia. Seven o'clock kickoff as the Kings are coming off a big win against Florida State. Uh, can we jump back to the defense for a moment? Sure. They, I like that. they uh, really discovered how to take their game to a different level. The back-to-back -back turnovers, I thought they had a third one in there as well, but uh, really a shutout for them in the second half. Yeah, I don't know what the total yardage was. It was it like 45 yards of total offense in the second half. You know, having to get stops, getting the stops, and not only getting stops, but getting turnovers. And uh, definitely got the ball rolling on grabbing the momentum back. You know, at halftime, you're, you know you're down two scores. Two scores, you, you can take the lead. And so we're feeling good about that. We know we can play good defense and all. And we, we um, end up giving a special teams touchdown up. Now we're down 20. And, um, but I, I'm, I'm so proud of the team and how everybody handled it. I mean, you can look at body language and know guys are disappointed, you know, but you, you can also see what, whether there's any kind of uh, losing of hope or, or, or pointing fingers or anything like that. I mean, there's just nothing that even came close to resembling that. It, it's a tribute to our coaching staff and how close we are as a staff and, and how much the kids trust us and how much we trust each other to, you know, hang in there and battle. And, you know, I think, I think you would mentioned that uh, – Pat Bethel was interviewing, you were interviewing Pat, and I don't know what you asked him. He said, I asked him <clears throat> about the win, and he said, I says, when did it turn? And he says, in the spring. Yeah. He says, well, we won this game in the spring. Right. And that's. He's talking about Matt Drills, talking about how we train. Uh, I mean, everything we do, you know, has a finish line. And we, we, we're going to finish hard, and we're going to hustle, and, and we're never, never going to quit. You know, it's just like that Matt Drill program. If you decide that you want to quit the mad drill program, then you've quit the team. You got to walk out the door, you know. And uh, but everything we do is based on the fact that there's going to be adversity. We we try to create it, and then we try to overcome it in practice, in mad drills, and in our strength and conditioning all summer long. And Pat hit the nail on the head. And and it's when you hear that as a coach, it blesses you because you're like, hey men, this is why we do what we do. This is why we train so hard this is why we do it a certain way because we're going to get in these types of moments and you've got to be able to come through not only as a as a player but as a team and it was pretty pretty special road game acc in the conference the whole everything to play for it's a night game too it is seven o'clock yeah so uh we're going to get the best of their atmosphere we get the best of their crowd bronco mendenhall their coach i've known him for years uh, you know, during the time he was at BYU, and uh, we're actually pretty good friends. And I know what kind of a coach he is. I know how well prepared these guys are going to be, and uh, it's going to be a battle. Their secondary, I think, has been together for a while. They lost uh, Quinn Blanding, but Thornhill is back. He has eight career interceptions. So he played in over 40 games. You don't often get guys in college who play that many games, but he's a pretty good ball hawk for them. Yeah, he is, and. They did lose two great ones. Uh, was it Kaiser? Yeah, Kaiser. Linebacker. Yeah. Right. And then Blanding, you know, guy that led the world in tackles for about three years in a row. Um, 
and they were they were great senior leaders and great ball players. But like you say, they got a, enough of the the guts of their defense back, and and they're going to play big, I'm sure. All right, Coach. Virginia coming up. The very best of luck. Congratulations on Florida State. All right. Best of luck against Virginia. Thank you, man. All right. That's University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. Don and I will continue right after this. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, everybody. Brought to you by Williamson Automotive. This week, the Hurricanes are on the road. Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia. 7 o'clock kickoff, Miami and Virginia. Well, the reward for beating Florida State <laughs> is to go to Virginia and play a night game against a team that's been sitting there for a week because they've had a bye week. So they're going to be well-rested and they're going to be ready to go. Some kind of reward, right? You get to walk into the snake pit. But this is, you know, Virginia has been a team that uh, has always given Miami problems. They're, they're well coached. They don't make mistakes. Their philosophy of football, their brand of player that they get there are hard-nosed guys. And Miami's going to have to take the show on the road. And the thing is, is it as crazy as it sounds, is you have to forget about Florida State. You've got to get that out of your system. For the Miami offense, there's not much that, that you can cross over to compare to the Virginia defense. And then the Virginia offense, they've got a quarterback that can run around and throw the football. And he's a legit quarterback. He's really changed the University of Virginia's offense completely. It's put him on the map that Bronco Mendenhall, their head coach, has been looking for that spark or that answer, and he found him in this quarterback. Yeah, Bryce Perkins is the quarterback, dual threat quarterback. Jordan Ellis in the backfield. Uh, Zacchaeus, the wide receiver, is a really good player. They could not run against Miami last year, but what they did do is hit the Hurricanes with about four big plays. Now, the quarterback was off the charts a year ago, but still, uh, Zacchaeus is back, and Perkins is a big play uh, quarterback, both in the pass game and the run game. Well, Perkins, the quarterback, is a little deceiving because you say, well, they don't run the ball. They do run. He, yeah, runs, he runs the runs football, <laughs> and he's big, Joe. He's six foot three. He's a 200-pound guy. He was, They. everybody says, well, junior college, something's not right. No, he was, I believe, at Arizona before, and then he left and went to junior college because he wanted to play that quarterback position. Zacchaeus makes plays all the time. He, he's a big timer, and they have enough speed on the outside to give anybody problems. But a quarterback like that, you never know what's going to happen. He's so hard to pin down, but it, Manny Diaz will do a nice job of, of figuring it out, and the, the pass rush that Miami provides will help control that because all the, especially you take Garvin and Jackson, they're so athletic, they can chase people. Now, these are all big games now. You win this one, again, Miami's trying to get back to uh, Charlotte and 2-0 and so far in the conference. And so head-to-head uh, -head competition here, this is a huge game for Miami. Well, this is business. Now it's business, right? You, you, had, you had some games that you could w you want to win every game, but if you lost, it really didn't affect the conference. Everything counts. Everything matters right now. And as a team, the team being Miami, you have got to improve every single week because you mentioned this is about winning the ACC. You get to that conference championship game, this is all that's a whole nother ball game. You got the best of the best and you need to be at peak at that time. Big game coming up for the Hurricanes, Miami and Virginia, seven o'clock kickoff from Charlottesville. For University of Miami head coach Mark Rick and Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show.